Fire. If you were going to try to attack Shaquille O'Neal, no sure. weapons, yes. just you. You know, obviously you're a little bit smaller than Shaq. How I'm at a disadvantage. It? It's got to be from behind. I know that's cowardly, but come on. <laughs> so you would approach from behind, try and take him by surprise. I know you said no weapons, but I'd use the element of surprise as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I think like whether it's whether he can see you coming or not, the move is to go after a leg, try and. Yeah, it does like immediately humiliate yourself to go for a leg, like uh, classic uh, Jeff Van Gundy, Alonzo Mourning. It's not yes. a, it's not a proud <laughs> move. <laughs> the reason I ask is because Scott Skiles, former NBA coach and player, once really genuinely tried to fight Shaq. And Scott Skiles is bigger than both of us, but is not a big guy, not for an NBA player. And so I want to I want to talk about that story, about why it happened and how it went. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. He must have been so angry. <laughs> I'm wondering, since you grew up a Wizards fan, what your impression of Scott Skiles is. I don't know how many people at mm -hmm. home have heard of him. And, and if they have, they probably know of him as a coach. So what's, what's your sense of Scott Skiles? He was, I, I think, on the Bullets back when the Wizards were the less shamefully named mm -hmm. Bullets. Um, yes. Good little guy, good little passer. Certainly not the most, like, pugnacious or ready to fight or anything like that. And I feel like especially people of our age know him better as a coach, right? Like, yeah, his his turncoat bullshit. I think as a coach, he has a reputation for being sort of stodgy and buttoned up. Yeah, um, very no, no nonsense kind of. A no nonsense kind of guy. He has at points earlier in his career been kind of a some nonsense person. He was a big time party boy in college, got into all kinds of trouble. He holds the NBA single game assist record, which is wild. One of my favorite things about Scott Skiles is that his transition from playing to coaching happened when he was playing in Greece and he was injured and he was fighting a lot with the coach. And so he was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go home. And the GM of the team he played for in Greece was like, how about instead of leaving, I just get rid of the coach and I'll make you coach. Instead of quitting, you become the boss, basically. <laughs> yeah. How about a promotion instead? And that was yeah. the start of Scott Skiles' coaching career. But we are going to talk about the 1993-1994 season. Uh, Skiles was on the Magic. Shaquille O'Neal was in his second season. And this was, this was a rough year for Scott Skiles. This is towards the end of his playing career. He turned 30 this season. He was starting to slow down as 30 year olds do, balding a little bit. Penny Hardaway, this hotshot rookie, had just arrived in Orlando and was pretty quickly encroaching on Skiles' starting yeah. point guard spot. So the, the jealousy meter was rising. <laughs> the jealousy meter was absolutely rising and for good reason because Penny Hardaway was really good. Full head of hair. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's full head of hair. <laughs> Skiles almost got traded that season. He got his lip busted open at one point. Off the court, he was going through a divorce. He had a really messy custody battle going on. Oh, it was just like, just a bad season in the life of Scott Skiles. There's actually one story in particular that precedes this. In late 93, the Magic were playing the Pistons and Bill Lambeer like blindsided Skiles with a really dirty screen. Classic, and, yeah, classic. Typical Bill Lambeer. <laughs> Blindside the smallest guy. <laughs> yeah, and the important thing from this is that Skiles desperately wanted another shot at Lambeer, wanted a rematch so he could like attempt to kick his ass. But Bill Lambeer retired abruptly in the middle of the season. And Skiles is on record saying like, I wanted another shot at him. I am disappointed that I did not get an opportunity <laughs> to fight Bill Lambeer. Which honestly is just another feather in the cap of Bill Lambeer. It's like, <laughs> not only did I injure him, but like I've also hurt him emotionally <laughs> and he can never get <laughs> revenge. <laughs> so, all that in mind, Scott Skiles is having a bad season and his baby at wit's end. Fast forward to late March 1994. Magic were having an up and down season and they played a game against the Lakers in, in LA that they lost. From this point, the story has been told a few different ways and so I'm going to try to kind of go down the Convince, middle and get yeah. a little bit of everything. <laughs> but basically, the day after the game, the team decided to stay in LA and practice at the Great Western Forum. And the coach, Brian Hill, was like, these guys need like a jolt of energy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them scrimmage three on three and just let everything go. 
they can just oh, well, yeah. beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> fouls turned off. Kind yes, of exactly. <laughs> fouls turned off. Anything goes. If you bleed, you bleed. People are really getting into it. They're talking trash to each other. They're fighting a little bit, throwing elbows. Shaq, who is, you know, the biggest and best player on this team, even as a youngster, is going up against Larry Kristowiak, who is a serviceable veteran big man who is not even nearly as good as Shaq. Skiles is on the court, apparently, like, just talking a lot and very aggressively. And there's some variation in like what he apparently said, depending on who you ask. Shaq says Skiles was accusing everyone of like partying too much when they were in LA. That's not the best trash talk I've ever heard. You were invited to too many parties. <laughs> Shaq and Larry Kostoyak got into it and Skiles went up to them and was like, you guys won't actually fight. Like, you're cowards. You won't go after each other. Ooh, just the <laughs> sideline instigator. <laughs> yeah, just like getting them riled up. And then they got into a little, a little bit and Skiles immediately was like, oh, I got to defend Larry Kostowiak. And he jumped into the fight. What happens after this is not really argued. Um, <laughs> Scott Skiles, who, to be clear, Scott Skiles is 6'1", under 200 pounds. Keel O'Neill is 7'1 and well over 300 pounds <laughs> at this point in his career. Also, Skiles, as we've established, had just turned 30. Shaq was 22. Okay, okay. some differences. Yes. Just a few. <laughs> I, I know who I'm taking in this fight, but Skiles ran at Shaq and took a swing at him. I would say that's an ill-advised move. Um... Shaq claims he dodged the swing with his, quote, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson reflexes. Oh, wow, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> Shaq then put Skiles in a headlock, and as Nick Anderson, who was also on the team, described it, pushed Skiles' neck down into his shoulder. <laughs> Pure cartoon <laughs> crunch. <laughs> yeah, Pla Play-Doh man. <laughs> Just grabbed that little man and squished him. But it turned into like a whole team thing. I think everyone had some had some vibes they needed to get out. Everyone just jumped on. It was a big dog pile with everyone hitting each other. Material Green, who was the bench guy on the team, was just kind of like circling around the scrum and just throwing jabs at whoever he saw. <laughs> Almost like uh, uh, just outside the, uh, the mosh pit, shoving into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. The same energy. Just to get back to how you started the conversation of like, how would you go about attacking Shaq? I mean, I understand throwing a punch is how you would start a fight, but it just seems like a, a weird first move against Shaq. Like, you're going to hit him in the chest. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that seems like an emotional decision, not a logical one. And also, like yeah. you said, yeah, where is that punch landing if right. you're a foot shorter than him? I doubt it's getting up to the face. <laughs> no way. I'm surprised Shaq did like older brother, like head palm type move. As someone who has, you know, playfully had that done in childhood, it's humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> After your entire team has had an all-out melee brawl in practice, what do you do if you're the coach? Well, you never admit that it was your fault for <laughs> starting a fouls turned off, injuries turned off scrimmage. <laughs> Just quietly tell people to go home. That would have been my answer is like, all right, well, I think we, we accomplished what we needed to accomplish today. In fact, yeah. the magic kept practicing for like a while afterwards. Oh, wow. I, how do you regroup after that? Just like, okay, same teams. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I, I think neither of us is equipped to be an NBA coach because Brian Hill was like perfect. <laughs> yeah. Now we will right. channel this into basketball. And like <laughs> a year later, that team's in the finals. Scott Skiles, mm. though, was not long for the magic. It was pretty clear at that point that Penny Hardaway was going to take his job and that he wasn't the right guy for that young up and coming team. Although I will say nowadays, if you ask either of these guys, Shaq and Scott Skiles about each other, they both have totally positive, warm things to say. And they both kind of laugh about the fight that they had. Oh, good, good. Because when you, when you were first telling me that they got in a fight, I assumed they were not on the same team. <laughs> During yeah, fight, well, but. that's a pretty safe assumption because <laughs> coworkers yeah, yeah. are not supposed to fight each other. <laughs> I'm also happy to report that Scott Skiles' uh, head and neck have been removed from his torso. And oh, okay. So it's a reversible procedure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, you just kind of... <laughs> uh, one quote that I love from this is, in Skiles' recollection, years later, he said, I charged Shaq, he had me by the neck in a headlock, my neck was sore for like six weeks. I don't think Jesus. I'd go that route again. 
six weeks. As you were saying it, I was expecting it to be six days and to be shocked about that. <laughs> six weeks when being like physically capable is your livelihood. <laughs> You know, that's what being 30 is like. Like I, I slept funny in 2019 and my neck still hurts. <laughs> hey, big news. Soon we are going to be changing our name to Secret Base. If you want to know what that means, you can check out our video or you can just watch some more Shaq beef. That's fine with me. <laughs>